button. Hello, uh, thank you for watching. I am Stephen Amos, and the other team members are Eric, Aaron, Ken, and Mayuri, and we are Makes Engineering LLC. So, um, this is what we did, a flow of our work. Uh, we first started out with uh, various ideas, um, which we did, we took those and we, uh, we did calculations on, um, on those ideas, and then we, from there, came up with our final design concept. What we did, what actually what we ended up doing was we built SOLIDWORKS models for all the, almost all the designs, uh, and then we transferred those SOLIDWORKS models via step files over to Abacus, where we did more further analysis. And the last thing we did was uh, validation of those results. Okay, so we were given two hubs as you can see here, uh, the bigger one's a wheel hub, the other one's a drive hub. They are to be spaced six inches apart, and our goal was to design a beam that would withstand these loads that you see up here. Um, and this, the material, this is aluminum 6061, um, and this to weigh no more than nine pounds. Um, there's no limit as far as space is concerned, um, but our factor of safety has to be uh, no less than two. Um, and for our assumptions, we assumed only tension for axial loading, and also the torque and tension loads are independent from one another. Um, and of course, we also assume these physical and mechanical properties, um, as you can see here. And as far as the elements are concerned, we used seeds that were spaced 34 to 40 hundredths of an inch apart, and the candy bar had 10 and 10 inch uh, elements and due to the constraint of the software itself we were limited to 20,000 nodes. Here are a few ideas which we came up with. First of all we did brainstorming. Every one of us came up with different ideas. There is a cross beam which was the plus sign and it would have been better served if the moments were in plane and out of plane but in this case, we had just in-plane moment. So the another idea was dri driving the hollow square pipe through the side of hubs. There was an issue for buckling due to moment. Then we came up with the idea of uh, only web or the solid thick plane as in there. Mm. For action load, we needed to increase the area of the section, but we also had the moment. So we had to increase the lever arm instead of just increasing the area because we had the limitations of weight. So we went with the idea of I-beam. Also there was an idea for the double I-beam but we tried to keep the flanges apart or the far from, far from the neutral axis uh, to increase the moment resistance. Uh, as the, the area near the neutral axis is um, not useful for the resisting moment. Uh, there was an issue for the not sensitivity at the junction of the beam and the hubs. Then we tried to um, keep the tight tangential flanges, just the flanges, and if there was an issue for buckling, we would use the tapered I-beam. But we find we went, uh, we developed the solid box model and we ran the practice model for tap this flanges, the tangential flanges, and the stresses were uh, stresses were 28 KSI, which were too high from the limit of 20 KSI. So we went with the idea of IV. So this is the this is the design that we came up with that we ended up with. Uh, a few things I wanted to point out to you: uh, the flange thickness here is a, a tenth of an inch all the way through. Over here, you have the height is one inch and then one and a half inches across. Now, applying the loads, we uh, we just use concentrated loads. And the reason we did this, we had uh, we made an assumption that the large hub was not going to fail. Uh, using using this, we applied four loads of 1,750 pounds uh, to come up with the required 7,000 pound load and we fix the inside hub. 
for a moment, it was very similar. We just switched the directions, and the magnitudes of the force uh, was 300 pounds each. Running the abacus model, uh, the tensile or the bending moment was very successful. Uh, we got around a four, um, uh, a factor of safety of four, and it, uh, which translated into about one, 11 ksi. Uh, well, the problem where the problem came out was the tensile stress. We discovered that both there's uh, stress concentrations here uh, when connecting to the large hub as well as there just wasn't enough cross-sectional area here. So, uh, as you can see, we got around 33 KSI, uh, or a factor of safety of 1.18, which was too low for the design criteria. So what we did to correct this, we added a filler radius around when connecting to the large hub of approximate of a quarter inch. Now this could be uh, a, a weld, or it could be just a simple radius from a casting. Over here, you see uh, the element, how the elements were laid out. It was, uh, we increased the element size just in the connector here and around the, where it connects to the large hub. We doubled the, the flange thickness here. This is uh, 0.2 inches, and the weight of this came to about 5.29 5 pounds. Now, uh, running the abacus model then, uh, we we surpass the design criteria. Uh, tensile, where it had once been a problem, now is 2.19 factor of safety, or uh, approximately 18 KSI. Uh, uh, bending uh, went way past the factor of safety, uh, and we achieved only 6.79 KSI, uh, or a factor of safety of about 5.9. Our team spent a significant uh, effort on validating the FEA model with some hand calculations which are summarized here. Given the geometry, we came up with a notch sensitivity factor of 1.625 and with our tensile load case of 7,000 pounds, dividing that force by an area of 0.64 inches squared, we came out with a tensile stress of about 17.8 KSI which is less than the 20 KSI allowable. For our torque load case of 1,200 pound inches, um, we looked at the cross-sectional properties and the elastic section modulus of our I-beam came out to 0.28 inches cubed. And when we applied the notch sensitivity factor and take the moment divided by that section modulus, we come out to about 6.9 KSI, which is definitely less than 20 KSI. In this table, we're comparing what the results of the FEA model are with our hand calculations. And as you can see, we were only at most 3% off. Uh, for the tension load case, it was 2.9% difference, and for the torque load case, it was 1.5% different. So the validation effort also proved to be a valuable quality control measure. We found a few errors in the FEA model, which we were able to correct. Uh, there's more details on the validation process in the final report as well as some validation uh, details for the double plate model that we also pursue. Okay, so the project report stipulated that the part be done in aluminum, but we also went out and did just a real generic comparison of the different metals that could have been used. And what's highlighted in red here is the reason why we would not advise using these materials. To go to steel, you're going to go over the total weight required. To go to titanium, you're going to be very expensive. And to go to a, a rarer metal such as magnesium, you're going to get down into yield strengths that are not acceptable. So for, for the cost analysis, what we decided to do for manufacturing is we separated our, our overall design, the two hubs and the bracket, into three parts that we were going to weld together. Um, so our, our cost analysis here for a batch size of one, the, these are the, the components of our costing. So you can see that the material here, the stock, um, more stock, this is a big component of our actual cost. And the machining uh, just would be simple milling. 
um, is another big component. The welding and then the finishing would be for any deburring procedures or polishing, anything along those lines. So based on a typical shop rate of $75 an hour, which would account for any overhead such as um, welding wire or cost of electricity, we, we figured out that the unit cost would be about $350 a piece. Now if we wanted to increase the batch size to 50, we decided to go away from just a simple milling for the machining process and go with something uh, CNC. So we allotted for some CNC programming time and the CNC machining, you can see this is, machining is a significant part of what we're doing over here now and the, the stock actual portion has, has shrunk a little bit. Um, so for a batch size of 50, our overall cost is about $7,000, however the unit cost decreases to $140, which is a very significant improvement. For even higher batch sizes, if we wanted to make a million of these parts, we would look into some method such as die casting, some, some form of casting. Um, this is a chart that we got from a textbook that is it's mentioned in the report. And you can see as the number of components increases, the relative cost per, comp per component decreases. So this would be a good, um, good generic form to follow if we wanted to go for a really high batch size. In summary, this is our final design. It's very effective for both the tensile and the flexural. The tensile for the increased surface area accounts for the thrust loading and the, the webbing in the middle supported by the flange actually wor it works for the for the, for the bending. So we feel that this part is very effective both in the uh, design requirements and the cost. Thank you for your time.